Now, with that selected, we actually need to do one last thing. Sunlight works off of a sky a skybox type scenario, meaning that you would have one or more uh, faces defined as a fake backdrop. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up. We're not actually going to add a skybox in yet. We're just going to set up a, um, the, the top surface as fake backdrop so that sunlight will work. And to test this out, I might have to adjust the rotation a little bit, but we can do a build all real quick and switch over into shaded mode. And there we've got much more detail. We yeah, could it's a lot easier to see what's actually going could on. We could go into the sunlight and brighten it up just a little bit under light color, give it a light brightness whoops. Light brightness of one twenty eight. Mm. And that way, I mean except for the shadow of course, since you have the you notice the angle of the light that was set based off coming from this top surface. So we have a little bit of shadowing over here, but out in the light it gets easier to see because you have the light side and the shadowed side of the train itself. So with that, we'll jump back into train editing mode and continue on. So we have uh, painting, and of course painting respects the, the various options, inner radius, outer radius. So if you wanted to not have any area affected 100%, you could simply drop that all the way down to 1, and it's a, it's a smoother effect now where you have the, the effect immediately starts to fade out from, from the beginning. And of course the strength to define how much you paint on per stroke. If you lower this way down, you would only paint a very little bit. As a matter of fact, I'll move it a little up from that. So you can see it very slowly affects the trains, and that's very nice for detail editing where you don't want to where you want to be very careful about how the train is is positioned. And while we're still painting, we can point out a few other things. Say you have a, a, a inner and outer radius combination you like, you can lock those together so that by simply adjusting the outer radius, both stay the same. So you have the same difference between the inner and outer radius. Um, out from that, we have the uh, the mirror. Now this is really handy if you want a symmetrical type terrain. You can drop this down and specify an axis. And then you actually have it'll it'll mirror your uh, your s location over to the other side. So if you were to paint, actually let me set the strength up a little bit more. It'll actually mirror, so you have the same thing on both sides of the terrain. You can mirror an X, Y, or both. So you can actually have four posi or four operations mirrored at the same time, which is which is really handy and really powerful for generating symmetric terrain. So with that, let me go ahead and turn mirroring back off. And that's uh, that's basic painting. After that, we have smoothing. Now, what smoothing will do is to simply take all the uh, the values inside whatever radius you specified and average them out to uh, to basically smooth everything together. Done by holding Control, left dragging, and simply uh, smooths out the train. And with this, we we again we have a strength. So if we don't want to smooth very much, we can lower that down, and the effect will occur more slowly. One thing to point out, though, is be careful when you're painting very near the edge. You notice how the brush starts to, uh, once it hits the edge, you have a straight side of the brush. This can cause problems with smoothing. Uh, so I wouldn't recommend smoothing out to the very edge of, a ter of the terrain. So after smoothing, we have noise. And this is simply to, uh, to paint random values onto the height map to give a, a spiky sort of... Uh, uh, distorted effect or noise. So if I up the strength back up, it'll be easier to see. So I can paint noise over an area. And this is affected, now this is affected by more than just strength. You saw strength, uh, a higher strength meant that it would paint the noise more quickly. But we still seem to have a max amount that we can possibly raise the vertices affected by noise. What we can do is we can take the adjust, and that specifies the maximum amount we can move these vertices based on the noise itself. So if we up that to say 128, and then went to paint the noise, we could affect the vertices a lot more. Let me adjust that back down to 32. And noise is, um, it ends up working a lot better if you combine it with smoothing. You notice you have very jagged surfaces, so unless you had a very low adjust and only wanted a little bit of noise, this ends up looking quite jaggy and would be very hard to navigate. So we can combine that with a little bit of smoothing. Let me turn the strength way down so we can slowly affect this area. And you can see that's where having a, a very low amount of uh, smoothing can help. So we take these jagged points and move them in. So let me run, run over that one last time without so much strong smoothing so fast. So we have very jaggy points. Switch over to smooth and do a very low smooth value, maybe even lower than that. And we can smooth those down. So you can combine smoothing with noise to give uh, it would give more pattern. If you had a rocky area, you could start out by uh, adding noise and then smoothing it a little. 
So that's noise. After noise, we have flatten. Now, flatten is really interesting. If you, the way this works is whatever point you have, wherever your brush is, before you start to flatten, acts as the master value for the flatten, if you will. So if I was to start over this area, hold control and left drag, everything will be brought up, brought to that exact level immediately. So it immediately grabs that one value I was pointing and adds that to wherever I move the brush. So if you were to drag this over your entire terrain, your entire terrain would become a flat plane at that point you selected. Now, as you can see, I can go and grab a different height, uh, hit control and start flattening again, and I'll start flattening to that level. Uh, under flattening, we have visibility. Now, visibility is what you would use if you were to actually, if you needed to cut out part of a level so you could build into it, like if you wanted to cut out the side of a hill. Let me uh, lower the radius down again. And simply control and right to erase faces out, or control and left to paint them back in. It's visible. And it's simply a visible or not visible, uh, one or zero, basically. So you have to, well, to actually use this, you have to, uh, after you've cut out, you'll notice that the faces are kind of jaggy, and you'll have to go and add, um, you'll have to cover that up with uh, brushes or static meshes. Let me go ahead and fill that back in. And finally, we have edge turn. Edge turn is more just for a final tweaking, and in order to see the effect, I'm actually going to switch the, uh, the viewport over to wireframe. You notice how all the, uh, the actual, the wireframe is running in a certain direction. What edge turn will allow us to do, and let me actually turn the radius back down to, down to one, this works best with one because it's generally used only for very fine tweaking once you're pretty much done with the train. You notice we have all the, uh, the edges basically running in the same direction. If you control and right or left over that area, you see you can paint over, uh, individual faces and flip the edge. This can be useful if you have one sharp point and it would uh, and that part of the train would flow better if you had individual control over the edges and that's what edge turn is for. Now you c it will work with a radius greater than one but it's not really recommended because it will affect that entire radius and isn't the, uh, the detail control it's meant to be. So that's that's basically a run through of all the tools you u you'll u be using for basic train editing. Let me switch this back over into a shaded mode. Um, the texture, pan, rotate, and scale are used with editing layers to modify the texture that belongs to that layer. Very cool. So that's going to pretty much wrap up this lesson here where we're just taking a look at the basic tools. Yep, that's so one. Thanks a lot.